right, so uh, my camera's messed up and Grant doesn't have one and Chris is presenting, so he's the only guy you need to see anyway. Um, and hopefully you're looking at the screen. So uh, what we're gonna do is a crash course on uh, how to how to process an image in Lightburn and just in Lightburn. Uh, now the version that he's using is a beta version, so the interface will look a little different, but the values and the things that he's doing will be the same. And then soon enough, you'll have the new interface, so it'll all kind of fall together. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it over to Chris uh, and let him do his thing. All right, so we're gonna also be discussing with Grant, and Grant's got some questions. He's not only is he a great addition to our team, um, he is trying like hell to learn about photos. And he's got a bunch of questions and we're gonna run through that as well as show you the different image processing uh, features of Lightburn. So I just down downloaded uh, an image and I'm gonna go real quick and see if I can grab it and bring it in and then we can get started with the questions. All right, we have an image, and of course, uh, I think I've told you, Grant and Brian, you know, if you're bringing garbage in, you're yeah. going to get garbage out, and that is always the case. So we want the best resolution we can. Um, Lightburn does get a little laggy when we get up to about 1,000 DPI, but it can still process it if you give it some time. Um, you got to remember that all of these processes that Lightburn uses, um, you're going to, you're getting a dot pattern. You're getting um, a breakdown of the image in, in dots and to create a better dot pattern and create a better image for the laser to use, you want to give Lightburn as much information as possible. So anywhere between 300 and a and thousand DPI should be excellent to achieve great quality. Nice. All right. So we have that image here. Um, and actually, I'm just gonna I'm gonna make it a little smaller and zoom in. Another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that if you're using a lot of these image R or um, what's that one really expensive one, Brian? Photograph uh, or Photograve? Photograph. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I use. I cheat. That's why I'm here today <laughs> too. <laughs> you, you have to do a lot of matching of DPIs, and there's a lot of stuff to be concerned about before you even bring it in. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I remember having to to match DPIs and and that being a concern. Mm -hmm. um, if you give you an error all, if you didn't match the lasers projected DPI output and that kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah, and and if you go too high on it, it'll actually throw a crazy image out. Um, luckily, Lightburn does all the processing internally, so no matter what you bring in and no matter what you're going out to the laser it knows enough, it's smart enough to make the image correct on the output side. So uh, less to be concerned about and much easier, a uh, lot less thought put on, on the user end um, than with some of these other programs. I'll go to Sweet. shape properties. All right, so typically when you wanna process an image, um, we have our cut layers. We will double click on our cut layer, and this is our section for our process choices. Grant, what do you got as far as these? Have these been confusing for you? Somewhat, but really, I think when I first started, uh, Clay had told me that Jarvis is really like the go-to one, so I would use Jarvis a lot. And then I remember when you and I worked on a uh, I think it, it wasn't the Spider-Man picture, it was the Viking picture. I was going to okay, yeah. wood, and you said to mm -hmm. use grayscale, and um, we did some different things in, in like speed and power and stuff like that. So it is confusing. I don't know when to use which one. <laughs> Got it. So there's some that you're not going to use, and, and some of them that are artistic. Um, threshold, and, and the great thing about uh, Lightburn, it's going to give you a small description. And um, now with the current beta, I'm um, not sure when it's going to be released. It's going to give you a side by side um, to help you determine one your adjustments of of um, speed, power, and also you know the the process that you're going to use. So if we look at let's just pick threshold real quick, and and basically this is going to take the light lights 
and the dark darks and it's going to give you a creative result it's not going to uh do anything spectacular you're not going to get a uh, a full-blown image here and this is this is a thousand by a thousand photos or something like that it's it's rather large and right down uh, here we have the invert we'll probably get audio what's that no i can hear you audio problems chris you're the, dropping no. out i think it's a latency issue because of the timing's off too it doesn't match his mouth it's like watching a bad movie i think it's an, the, an internet a bandwidth thing okay chris say i am coming for you <laughs> i am coming for you okay it matched that time <laughs> i think okay. it's better yeah just processing this this photo might be a, a bit much for it you wouldn't want to do that in rd works i don't think absolutely not on rd <laughs> It would shut down. <laughs> Let's see here. All right. So, you know, and, and of course, in, in Lightburn, we do have the ability, depending on what we're doing and engraving on, to change the negative image. And I have a lot of, I was just doing a photo on, on glass. So um, some of my stuff here is pretty darn high. So we'll change this down for speed purpose. Uh, and, and I'm going to interject real quick because like 99.9% .9 of everybody that I ever talked to, uh, even if they measure things in Imperial, they still talk about speed in millimeters per second. So I just want to make everybody aware that Chris's screen, all of his speeds are inches, uh, inches per second. <laughs> it, is, not it, is per inches, second. <laughs> it is inches per second. Yep. I'm so one of those people that, that. <laughs> that refuse to, uh, to give in. <laughs> All right, let's see if this if that sped it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we were back on on the half tone, I believe. Yeah. Are you going to show the cool thing? Yes, I will. <laughs> um, did we want to go through all of these different uh, different orders, or just stick with the ones that work what? the best? What I wouldn't a Jarvis or a Stucky be the best kind of like all around kind of like the the kind of like the two inch lens uh, of the dithering? You know what I mean? As far as what people yeah. are going to bring in, at least for the purposes of this crash course, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, and we, we can, you can of, describe them all, you know, right. and if you if you know or whatever, it's up to you. OK. Yeah. And, and you know, dither, Stucky, Jarvis. There, those are all quick, excellent ones to go through, um, and and you're going to get a great result. Yeah, um, and all all of all of those also. Sorry, Chris. Uh, I, I was looking ahead. for information on this in the laser realm, and it was kind of mm -hmm. sparse. But this is the same exact thing as as print. So if you go to some of these printing groups, you know, and look at some of their their data, you know, and their knowledge bases about Stucky and newsprint and and all of that. You know, in the half tones, all of that information that's in there that they talk about printing presses and and you know digital printing or whatever is identical to this. So you can really garner a lot of information from those sources. You know, kind of thinking outside the box, looking for that or Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, and and even even the half tone. I mean, everybody's really confused. They start talking about the scan angle. Um, when when I start telling them that you know make sure that you have a a half tone angle of you know it has to be odd numbers but you know the idea is you're changing the angle the dots are being laid uh, to confuse the eye of the pattern you don't want to see the pattern you just want to see the picture um, and and 22.5 has been used in print for ever uh, yeah. so that's uh, I think yeah, that Brian, has something exactly. to do with the 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 that number not being real uh or being kind of impervious to the moray effect probably i mean right. you could probably use that number to correct that also yeah i mean you, you do anything else i mean if we look at the patterns down the bottom now we went to a 40 degree angle uh you can definitely see 
mm-hmm. all the patterning and that's you want to try to avoid that completely and you can play around with that there's there's some that are, are better than others but 22.5 seems to work really really well cool so going back to um what are we on we are on half tone we do a real quick run through threshold like i said threshold is not going to give you anything crazy a lot of people when they go to do their first image it's kind of stuck or um it just generically is set to threshold and Mm -hmm. they're doing it and it comes out like that and they're like what the heck there's no you know there's no detail to it and it's literally taking your brightest brights and your darkest darks and creating an image uh it looks kind of cool (laughs) it does and it's great for you know doing something artistic Mm -hmm. um real quick we'll go to um order i believe is yeah it's gonna be more pattern-ish and an- another problem a lot of people have is that they don't zoom into the photo and it's usually either a really light photo or a dark photo. Uh, switch that around. So they'll zoom out and like, well, I have no detail. Well, zoom on in. Uh, it's very hard for the computer screen to process all of these little dots. Uh, but once you zoom in, you'll be able to tell exactly what you're going to get. ordered and then atkinson uh we'll just skip right to to jarvis because atkinson to jarvis are all about the same um i typically revert to jarvis i think uh, after a lot of testing it seems to give me the best result i do have a quick question so do you pick a specific mode for lack of better words, for specific materials, or is it just relative to the photo? It doesn't matter what material. Um, it, it does, because because half tone, um, I tend to find lays such a tight pattern of dots that it'll it'll blow out a lot of things. It, it'll um, you know, it, it works really well on some stuff, um, painted tiles, um painted tumblers that have a thin layer of paint, not necessarily a, you know, a thick Yeti style. Yeah. Edge lit um, acrylic. It'd probably be good for edge yep. lit surface engraving. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Then, um, it works really well. Um, the issue that I have with it, I can, I can really come close to getting the same quality out of Jarvis um, running two times as fast because the, uh, because of the dot pattern, and you can probably hop in here, uh, Brian, correct me. Yep. But the the dot pattern on on half tone is so tight that you need to run a really really high DPI, which mm-hmm. means you're doubling or tripling your your runtime. Um, you're yep. going to get almost a photo photorealistic image, but I mean, if you're trying to make money. It may not be the the way to go. Um, so sticking with a Jarvis, um, you know, may be the best bet uh, for great quality. You know, offsetting, balancing the uh, the speed factor and the quality factor. Yeah, that's a good point. So that's that's usually really where I make my determination, um, and then I play around. You know, can I get a little bit better quality if I'm trying to do an image on acrylic? Uh, with half tone, typically yes, I can, um, but I can come very, very close. Uh, but it, like I said, it changes your your uh, DPI drastically. I'll, I can run with a high resolution lens um, or a 1.5 inch lens. I could run almost a thousand to 1200 DPI in half tone. Well, don't try that with Jarvis. Yeah, you're going to be down at three to three to, to 500 maybe. Um, pushing the limits. I mean, you better be tuned. Your scan offset better be right. Your, your you know, your alignment better be perfect. Mirrors um, clean. And that's why all Lightburn. <laughs> yeah, mirrors clean. And, and and that's why Lightburn has a built-in warning because unless you have all that stuff dialed in perfectly, you're yeah. not going to achieve those really really high um, DPI settings. Yeah. But we'll we'll stick with Jarvis. Okay. For right now. 
and to get a little off topic, so I've done a picture of a lion. I may have sent you the picture. I ran it like six mm-hmm. times, five or six times, because I couldn't see the detail that I wanted. So I don't know if I'm, right. I'm going too fast, not using enough, enough, not using enough power or what it is, but I feel like I have it all set up correctly, and it's just I can't get it right the first couple times. I have to keep going over and over. And and when I'm doing photos, I I mean we are trying to lay down all of these tiny tiny dots. And while you know I'm not sure of the capabilities of the power supply in the tube, that's Brian's area. I do know that the faster we go, the less or the more likely we are to miss those dots. Um, you know, so so I go a little bit slower, but there is a threshold. Um, you know, somewhere around four to six. Um, inches per second, which whatever that equates to in millimeters, um, I notice you start getting banding, so you have to go a little bit faster. Um, I keep it between 10 inches and 14 inches a second when doing photos, uh, just so I know I'm I'm laying down every single dot that's possible. And I think Brian's doing some math in the back. Yeah, I hate that. It's, uh, 10, 10 inches per second is 254 millimeters per second. Okay. So, you know, 300, 350, you're done in there. So, it, um, Grant, if you do start to get banding, um, you know, a curtain effect, maybe speed it up a little bit. I've noticed, like I said, I've noticed it down low. Uh, um, so, try to keep it between 10 and 14 inches per second. Um, yeah. Power. Power is going to completely depend on material. Yeah. Um, you know, if if we have a light, uh, say we say we took a piece of acrylic and we lightly painted it with uh, some flat black, and we just really want to pull off that that layer, you know, I'm I'm close to the firing threshold of the laser. Uh, you know, yeah, nine, ten, eleven, somewhere around there. I'm barely touching the surface of that. Just picking away dots and that's all that i'm doing otherwise otherwise you're blowing out all of those dots around the dot that you you know you're wiping away material or paint. it's like using a sharpie instead of a fine point pen right yep. and exactly i just want to clarify chris has a 100 watt yeah 51. yeah correct yeah I'm, I'm at 100 watts and and you know regardless Wait, of the rumors actually but yeah <laughs> Regardless of the rumors, you can easily get beautiful pictures using a uh, 100 watt laser, even 130 watt. Yeah. So, Jarvis, very simple go to. You can easily speed up your your uh, your engraving time by using something like this over grayscale, or grayscale is going to be about the same DPI as something like that. Uh, something like Jarvis, um, but halftone is There's, a ridiculous amount. Sorry, can I interrupt real quick? There is yeah. a distinction between grayscale and all this other stuff we're doing because it varies the power, whereas these others technically don't. They're either on or off making the dots. So correct. That that makes yeah, a difference and, you know, in, in in determining stuff. So. Yeah, I and grayscale. I mean, no, and, and grayscale is a totally different animal. Uh, we can briefly touch on that. Um, you know, we'll we'll get you know maybe towards the end of this we can get into grayscale. But yeah, that's, that's a I'm, totally different animal. Yeah, that might ought to be a different video. What, <laughs> <laughs> got it. Yeah, probably. It. Yeah, and that's more. Of a, yeah. yeah, more of a three dimensional engraving can be used. Um, can be used for regular engraving as well, but. Uh, more more so for three dimensional engraving or three D relief. Um, the newer part of Lightburn is going to be an adjust image, which uh, those of you that are used to photograph, um, it kind of gives you the side by side. You got the original image, and then you have the adjusted image over here, um, so you can. You know, do some messing with it. Um, you can even change the DPI, and it will adjust. Um, also, the image modes. You know, we're at 
kind of easy. That looks kind of uh, patterny, doesn't it, Brian? That's pretty awesome. So is this on uh, the current version of Lightburn or is this the beta? This is going to, this is the beta version of Lightburn. This is going to help out a ton of people that get really, really confused. And actually the reason why we're getting the patterning is because my DPI is set down closer to something of a Jarvis um, 800. There we go. Now it's starting to go away. But you can see how that would make a difference. And quite honestly, this is an exact translation into what the laser is going to try to do. So there's not as much guesswork as before where you're picking these different um, different processes. Um, you really are going to get a side-by-side -side representation of, of what you're going to get on the laser. Pretty cool, huh? No, I like that a lot. It's going to help me. Yeah, it's going to help a ton of people. And I think that's probably one of the, the things that may have been missing for people that just, you know, are, are reaching out and searching for all of these one-click options, uh, which don't really exist because there's just too many variations in photos. Um, obviously, we're working with a photo that is from the Internet that is perfect. Um, and fairly easy to run a script on or anything else you want to, and it's going to come out good. Um, but this is going to help out a ton of people. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's really I think cool. We talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but I, I lost you in the audio. So when you're <clears throat> at the very beginning stage, when you have your photo or you're looking for a photo, what are you looking for? I know you touched on it, but I just wanted to go over it one more time because I couldn't hear it. Um. For you mean a photo, like if you wanted to grab one from the internet, like this, right? Like what? I, th I think he means, are you looking for that kind of, uh, you know, either defocused background or that contrast in the back, so that it can pull that out? You know, so I, I think that's what he's asking. You don't want stuff that's real busy in the back, maybe. I mean, is that is that kind of what you're after, Grant? I mean, when you're you know trying to pick a, a photo out of a stack of them, on which one you think might be the best? Yeah, that's part of it. The other part is like if you're if you're looking at a photo, what tells you yes, I can laser engrave this, and what tells you no? Um, clear contrast, and and that's as simple as I can can make it. You need clear contrast, even if you're bringing in a photo of you know your family, um, shadows, stuff like that. I mean, of course, you know, for those of you that are new and those of you that have experience, if you haven't. If you haven't had this come across your desk yet, the person that sends the photo of a photo off of their iPhone, <laughs> you know, with with glare, uh, you know, of the screen, you know, stuff like that is impossible to work with. So, you know, force them to send you originals, um, high shadowing, a lot of stuff you can get rid of working in uh, Photoshop and some other photo editing programs. but. Um, yeah, the, the uh, again, the, the higher quality you start out with, um, the better the photo is, the positioning, all of that is going to be uh, very helpful and beneficial for the end result. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> but um, as far as, you know, when, when I'm looking online for things to download, um, I'm doing a, a quick search for lion photo and usually high resolution. Um, you can use any of the free photos and you can sign up and you get a certain amount per per month. Um, but if I click on this and I hover over it, I can see that this is a 1920 by uh, 1200. And that's going to be a huge photo with lots of information for Lightburn to do its dithering. Um, so I would be more than happy to take that, um, bring it into Photoshop and clean up all the edges and just use his head. Uh, <clears throat> and then now with the side by side in Lightburn, it's going to make it that much easier to fine tune um, your highlights, um, you know, your sharpness and all edge detail.
and edge edge detail and contrast are huge translating because you know we're we're working with a black and white image uh the laser can only do so much it's not printing anything it's laying down dots um so those definite or defined line in, in his head um the black spots around his eyes you know you want that stuff even on people's faces where it kind of looks really weird you wouldn't ever print um, some of these photos that you'll retouch but the more that you could pronounce the edge details the better results you're going to get um, from the laser cool questions anybody i'm good um, i think you're hitting it right on the yeah. head man um yeah there's just so much that I don't know. And I think the main thing is just getting in there, like you're saying, and playing with each and every one of those. It's going to be different for each material, like acrylic and wood. It's going to act completely different. Um, you also what have you, the air variable. Mm -hmm, yeah. All that. Yeah, what do you and, think about that uh, site that's got those light burn generation tools where you can output those, the eyeballs, and it does, it does a power scale for you, and it'll define a, an array? you know, of speeds and powers, it'll generate material test files. And it does a line interval, it has line interval generator tests and, and all kinds of stuff on it. Yeah, I mean, anything that you can do, like I have swatches of test material mm -hmm. in my shop and I can see exactly what they're capable of. We know what the machine can do, but right. what's the limitation of the material? You know, mm -hmm. if we if we are working with paint, <laughs> it's not going to take much to eliminate all those dots around it acrylic mm -hmm. you know at what point are we blowing away all of those surrounding areas of, of the plastic um so so yeah it's uh it, running some type of test pattern on these materials to know what the machine is capable of and what the material is capable of is highly beneficial yeah um and the other thing to know is your your focus or not your focus but you, but your your lens mm -hmm. um you know what quality how many dots can you put down what is your resolution mm -hmm. um how many deep dpi can you run and and, and 90 percent of the time when i'm looking at uh some of these images people send me and say hey what am i doing wrong either they have the wrong process or they're trying to run high dpi without the capability of doing so a, you know, according running a two and a half three inch lens <laughs> yeah the according to uh thunder Good. laser china uh on the standard um two inch lens the focal distance is five to six point five and the dot size is 0 0.099 millimeters or uh point zero zero three nine inches for the standard two inch right so if that helps and you know determining your line interval and stuff you know so that your line right. interval matches your your machine so right you know and and focal distance is huge too mm -hmm. if you don't have that perfect view you know maybe a ramp test to see exactly where it is i've noticed a lot of people buy cheap um uh, china made lenses or ebay lenses or something like that and the tolerances aren't there you know it may yeah. be a two inch lens and you're going off of the standard two inch um yeah. it, you know maybe lens made like that, that made we the ones would the use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this, yeah i mean so yeah so, and, and ours so, are uh, two six optics our our lenses are two six they're, they're manufactured by two six um all the ones that thunder usa sends out so between them and and you know i don't know i've got a set of steve's lenses here and i'm i'm gonna do a comparison uh whenever i get a minute or whenever i get my machine back up because i got some parts missing <laughs> so so in in a in a previous life when i had a different laser than a thunder um there was you know they give you the focus stick that you you measure mm -hmm. um and it was about an eighth out of the focus stick 
Yeah. Now so, I've heard I mean, some people say that ours are not right, and and that's what it says on on our on our manufact on the site is it's five to six point five millimeters. We say six millimeters, but it may right. be a little off. So you know, and they could use that test in Lightburn if they're comfortable moving the Z axis a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, doing and, the focus and, test and in there. Huge. Yeah. You know, the further away or the closer you get, you're you're going from the you know, again, a Sharpie to a fine point, you know, a fine point pen. And the, the finer that dot is, the the better result you're going to get, the more DPI you're going to lay down. Because as you expand, the that beam size, obviously, you're blowing away detail and you're defeating the purpose. Um, two huge things, the focus and your scan uh, scan interval or your uh, scanning offset. Yeah, those need to be money. Those have to be money if you're trying to get any type of photo replication, um, high quality photo replication. Mm -hmm. And um, I just linked the, the basics of focus article in that chat just in case. It's got a <clears throat> little video in case people want it. Yeah, I'm actually going to yeah. go this way. So scan offset is huge. We are we are trying to lay down tiny tiny dots, and if your scan offset, let's see if this comes up quick here. You know, I don't even want to do the the, the measurements that it has to be off for these to be misaligned. Mm -hmm. You know, if these are misaligned, you lose all quality whatsoever because this is cal calculating based on shading. So if your scan offset is off, you're yeah, it's going to be completely messed up and and you're going to lose quality. Yeah. So that's another huge yeah. thing. You want these dots to line up where they're supposed to line up. Yeah, and Grant did a he's a master at doing that visually, you know, because I'm thinking how do I write a knowledge base article on how to, you know, redo your scanning offset adjustments unless you have a USB microscope and some calipers and you know tweezers and stuff you know because those are right. just are finite amounts and, and then he's like well it's visual right and i'm like yeah i mean the, ultimately that's what you're going for is like well we just right. dial it in until it looks right <laughs> you yeah, know and, and it worked and, perfectly and the video that i made on on doing that i typically use my my cell phone i'll i'll use my cell phone i'll zoom in mm -hmm. and make micro adjustments right or left um, mm -hmm. and, and get it as perfect as possible. But those two are huge at, at getting a good quality photo. Absolutely. Um, as far as, you know, I, I think we've gone through just about everything, you know, knowing which, which item to use as far as negative image or a, uh, or a standard image. Uh, if you're doing it on acrylic, if you're doing it on glass, um, remember that, you know, anything like glass and acrylic, we're making the material lighter. So we're going to want to bring out or laser the light side. But typically yeah. the laser is engraving all of the dark stuff. Um, yeah. So try to keep that in mind when when you're trying to do an image. And a lot of people will, you know, which one do I use? Well. Think about what it's engraving. Is it engraving the lighter highlights? What's going to show up on that material? Yeah, slate too. You want to definitely do a negative image when you're doing slate stuff like that. Slate. Dark. Yeah. You know, or do you have white tiles that you painted black and you're revealing all of the white behind it? You know, you're yeah. going to do a negative. Yeah. Um, so it really depends. In most cases, uh, you know, on wood and stuff like that, you're using just a regular image for everything. Yeah else lighter you know where you're, where you're creating a you know removing paints or or the acrylic you're using that negative image yeah unless you're doing the nicky norton <laughs> yes that's <Yeah>. insane <laughs> <laughs> i think that that works better on diodes than it does it for does. us on a co2 yeah yeah now i want to try it on odin that's one reason i like these rf machines i bet this rf machine will knock it out because you can change the frequency on the rf tube and that might affect it and yeah, it's, it's, it's a 30 watt so i can dial down i can dial, dial down to a couple of watts if i want to 
and and you know right. or, or kick it up and go to you know two thousand millimeters per second you know and and it'll yeah. probably affect be about as as good as any seven watt laser <laughs> and, and i can only imagine the dpi you can pull out of yeah that too yeah yeah so as soon as i get the controller back in it i'm going to fire up odin i've got my obs studios all set up and i'm going to run everything remotely i think i can do a, a recording and i have a remote in one hand to control which camera is going and i'm going to have multiple camera views so i don't have to worry about producing anything i just right. do it right as i'm doing it if i walk over to the laser i hit the laser cam you know boom 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 and then just send it to youtube and i'm finished so nice it's i'm, I'm going to play with that when i'm doing this odin stuff so it's going to be cool so well that helps i'm going to play with this too um especially since I can do that side by side now, which everybody else will be able to do soon. So. Yep. Soon. Don't know what the release date on it is. Um, you know, but otherwise you know what you're looking for. Um, you know, the side by side is going to, going to help out a ton though, for a lot of people that aren't comfortable, you know, using their shape properties, um, yeah. and trying to figure out, I mean, you can see what happens, uh, mm -hmm. but Let you me know, ask what you did I question? come from? Uh, would you get mm -hmm. that? Would you get that uh, file right there set up the way you would run it, uh, and save it and send it to me and let me put it at the and as an attachment on the knowledge base article with this video, and that way they can pull the Absolutely. file and manipulate it and use it and play with the stuff and you know kind of go along. So yeah, yeah, we can and do it in the old I, format, not the light burn tube, because they won't be able to open it. I don't think until they get the new version. No, and and I'm thinking that my have something to do with with the uh the communication as well yeah yeah so but you oddly, can oddly i don't know why but yeah but there's something so, yeah i can yeah. yeah yeah we can save That'd as awesome. uh legacy i think yeah mm -hmm. save as yeah we can save as a legacy okay awesome yeah i can definitely that do that you. and I'll, I'll leave it yeah i'll um maybe i'll do two and an unedited um, version of, of just the photo or I'll just send the photo and then I can do it with my enhancements yeah. that I would do. Yeah. 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 How the would, original, that original would be cool too, to pop on there. The original yeah. photo. Um, yeah, that's so, they and can, also I'll plug your site real, you know, your face, your thing, house of lasers on your YouTube, because uh, Chris has videos on, on a lot of this stuff we were talking about on his channel. So go check it out. There's some good info on there. So. Yeah, this is this is the easy part of doing photos is, is taking something high quality and bringing it in. It's it's taking the stuff that people give you and making them laserable. Um, that's that's where fine tuning and, and Lightburn's not capable of doing some of that stuff. So fine tuning all of that stuff externally uh, is going to be huge to learn. And I have a couple of, of fairly decent uh, videos on that. Okay. Yeah. And especially I like the one about uh, coming in from AI or something, how all the layers get kind of wacky and there's all that masking and stuff going on, you know, and you got to do a lot of doctoring on it. So that's a, that's a great one. Yeah. I mean, we have to think totally different than somebody that's in print and, and a graphic designer where they can just layer upon layer stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it gets a little complicated and if you're not new to it uh, or if you're new to it, then it could get, quite overwhelming, but that's what, uh, one, our knowledge base is here for, and uh, some of our forums and stuff like that, there's always somebody to help. Yep, and the support system, so that's yep. cool too, and Chris checks in on us over there from time to time, so that's... A, a I try, cool I try. <laughs> so, I try. but I appreciate you doing this for us, man, and, uh, you know, uh, if you don't mind, I, I'll give you this, I'll record this and send you a link to it, so you can upload it to your YouTube and brand it if you want to for HOL you know, or whatever okay. as well. You know, Great. you can stick I'm your good. thunder on there too, if you want to, but whatever, it's your stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> no, that's fine. Grant, before we, uh, before we wrap this up, you have any other major questions? No, nothing major. It's really going to be me implementing this and testing it out. And then I'll probably have questions for you individually. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Thank you for doing it. Not a problem. My pleasure. And hopefully some of that made sense. Um, yeah, just keep your DPI low and increase it as you 
on, uh, keep your speeds low and minimal power. You know, you just, you just want to create, you know, little pinpricks is, is basically what you're trying to do. Sure. You're tattooing awesome. with a light beam. There you go. I saw that video too. So, all right. Well, we appreciate <laughs> the, it again. And, uh, and, uh, hope you guys get something out of this and we'll catch you next time.